that was the fuel for you to keep doing what you're doing and not accept the minimum? Good question. Well, for, for me, really, it all started when I was just, you know, seven or eight years of age. That was when you were a kid and you had this mentality. I was making, you know, good money as a 16, 17 year old, sometimes anywhere up to a thousand, twelve hundred pounds a week. Well, you are my personal mentor and I'm, uh, I'm glad that came across you back in 2018. And I know your success journey has been incredible. It has not been a straight line. It has been very, very like a roller coaster, isn't it? So how did you start? Good question. Well, for, for me, really, it all started when I was just, you know, seven or eight years of age. You know, that's really when I seem to have this I didn't know at the time this entrepreneurial, this drive for success, for mm. money, for wealth. And that really came from um, having to listen to my mum cry herself to sleep at night. We were um, living in council flats. It was a difficult period. My mum was a single mum to me and my brother Austin. And I used to, on a Saturday, go and read magazines in the local newsagents and I used to just obsess over like fast cars and planes and good looking guys in suits and good looking women in their dresses, in their blouses. And I really got drawn to like an opulent lifestyle, opulent items. Mm. And um, I made a decision. I made a decision at the age of eight years of age. I was going to become a multimillionaire. I was going to do whatever it took to um, provide for my mum, for my brother. And that's really where it started. And you know, I was that guy at school that could get you whatever you wanted. Uh, I used to go in with two school bags, um, the, 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 the one with the pens and the papers in, and I, and I really wasn't interested in that. And I didn't do very well at school and I was dyslexic and really struggled, but mm. I gave it 110%. Whatever I've done in life, I've always applied myself 110%. And, um, and then I had the other bag, which had the jeans and the perfumes and the cigarettes yeah. and, you know, you name it, I was the kid at school that could get you whatever you wanted. Um, so that's really where business started for me. And I really got excited about, you know, buying something from Tim. That mm. was his name, my mum's good friend. He was a market trader. Right. So I used to go and hang out with him <laughs> at the markets. You know, he'd give me something for £10. I'd go and sell it for £20. And then I've got this bit in the middle that I could then go and spend on sweets, right? Uh, and I got really <laughs> excited about trading items and, you know, being that sort of go-to purpose. It gave me a real sense of purpose and sense of achievement. And I really enjoyed that hustle and bustle and talking. Mm. And, and that's really where it started, yeah. So that was when you were a kid and you had this mentality. And that obviously it had followed you throughout yeah. the years to become. So... From then until now, let's fill that gap in the middle. Wow. Well, there's a lot, yeah? There's a lot, right? <laughs> so, um, look, I, I, when, I, when I was in secondary school, I started to knock on doors for Zenith Windows. Right. Six days a week. Um, sorry, part-time initially after school, all day Saturdays, all day Sundays, 12 hours a day. Wow. And I love knocking on doors. And I, I really believe that gave me a sense of how to overcome objection, how to build desire, how to turn a no into a yes. I had thousands, probably tens of thousands of doors slammed in my face. But through that uh, perseverance, um, I became the UK's number one door canvasser, uh, left school, did a GMVQ in business management, ran out of college three weeks later, and became a full-time door knocker for Zenith Windows. Six days a week, 12 hours a day, and I loved every second of it. And I was really good at it. And I was making, you know, good money as a 16, 17 year old, sometimes anywhere up to a thousand, twelve hundred pounds a week. And uh, through that period, I became addicted to fruit machines. And I was like, right, I, I better go and get a proper job. <laughs> so I worked for an insurance company uh, in their renewals department at the age of 18, 18. I was like, oh, I better get a proper job in a suit. And uh, done really well there. And, and then through one of the guys that worked there, there was this opportunity to go and work overseas mm -hmm. for a sales and marketing company, lead generation on the telephones in Spain. Right. I jumped at it. And I remember going to the interview with a suit three sizes too big for me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was quite a funny sight. And I got the job. And there I was three weeks later 
at the age of 20, getting on a plane to Spain, uh, feeling quite scared, quite nervous. And uh, that took me on to my next adventure, you know, living overseas. And that was really, really fantastic. And, you know, of course, became their top salesperson and smashed all their records. And uh, But what was really lovely about that process was I was, you know, traveling Spain. I was meeting new people. I was in my early 20s. I was drinking hard. I was partying hard. I was making loads of money. But throughout all of that, I was able to send money back to my mum. That was my driving force. Because remember, at the age of eight, I made a promise I was going to become a multimillionaire and yeah. look after my mum. And through that process, I remember sending money back to my mum. She bought her first house. Right. Wow. Yeah, so she got off the council estate, bought her first house. She set up a biv business called B. Billips, and her life started to change. And that was a really, 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 really good feeling for me. So lived overseas for a whole number of years, set my own companies up, grew a business to 180 staff. Business fell apart in 2008 when we had the crash. Found myself back in the UK 2012. Set up a renewable energy business, grew that to 115 people, best product in the UK. Government changed the legislation. Yeah. And then I'm on my ass. So it sounds like... It has not, again, been like a straight line, no but no you have not given up. Mm. Anyone would have said, oh, you know what, fuck this. Let me just, just get a normal job, as you said, in a suit and just join the corporate world yeah. and just do what everyone else is doing, yeah. get a nine to five, happy on the weekends, you know, may maybe watching EastEnders yeah. in the evening. <laughs> you just said your mum was your reason why. Yeah. That was the fuel for you to keep doing what you're doing and not accept the minimum. Yeah, just just go against the grain, really. You know, I, I remember being bullied at school and it's almost <clears> like <throat> I'm going to prove the bullies wrong. Um, I, I remember my teachers telling me, whatever you do, don't become a salesman, Liam. And, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go against the grain. And, I, and I've always just gone with my heart and my passion. I've always found something that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. and then tried to monetize it, right. you know, using my skill sets. And my skill set is, you know, sales, marketing, communicating, growing teams, yeah. motivation, inspiration. Um, that's really my skill set, which you can then apply to any business, any product, any service, because it's the same, right? Um, if you've got that big driving force right. and, um, you know, providing a good product, always providing a good service, looking after your customers. That's how you get respected. That's how you keep people for a long time. And it was really when I lost my renewable energy business is then I found this whole new world. Mm. And I met one of my great business partners, Mr. Jay Munoz, the Essex Colombian, we call him now. <laughs> and he was a property investor. I'd done property when I was living overseas, made every mistake in the book, lost 2 million euros. That really didn't go mm. according to plan. Got back into property. But doing it the right way, I invested in mentorship. I went and hung out new people. I got out my own way. And that really was a massive turning point in my life, which has really led right. me to where I am today. I want to thank you for tuning in and liking and being so engaging. Uh, I'm loving the love and the support you're showing me every single episode. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you follow us on all our social media and leave all your comments and your burning questions in the comment section down below. If you're listening to us through the audio platform, Spotify, iTunes, or if you're watching us on YouTube, do not forget to give us a subscribe. Thank you for tuning in to the Diaries of Success. I was your host, Hajar Beyaz. Until the next episode, do not forget to live your best life. <laughs>